Hello everybody. This video will describe how to create character animations within Unreal. Uh, in particular, we're going to focus on non-playable character animations for a, an RPG fighting based game where the player is going to be uh, viewing a non-playable monster enemy character and is going to be attacking uh, in a battle f uh, fight. Uh, where this non-playable character is going to be standing stationary, it's going to be running through idle motion, and it's going to be running through a variety of randomly generated uh, fight actions or attacks. Uh, so what we're going to do is set up the character animation so that they can be recalled through blueprints uh, in a RPG battle game like that. Uh, one thing I've started uh, already is I already have uh, the blueprint set up to show you uh, what the final output is going to look like. And I'm actually using some Paragon assets. So if you go to the Epic Games Launcher and go to the Marketplace, uh, if you go to the free content and then uh, go to free Epic Games content, and then you can search for Paragon. <coughs> uh, there's also Infinity Blade characters as well. Uh, I just chose the Paragon because they have a good variety of uh, characters. And uh, I'm going to use this Paragon Boris character. Uh, I've already downloaded it, but if you have not, you can click the Add to Cart button uh, and then add it to your own project. So what you'll do is you'll download the character pack that you want. Some of these files are pretty large, two, three, four gigs, so you just have to wait for it to download uh, and understand that your project is going to get larger. Uh, so after you add it to your cart and then go to your shopping cart and check out, it's going to then be added to your library. So if I go down here to your library uh, and find Boris, there he is, Boris right there, um, you're going to add to an existing project. So you need to go ahead and uh, what we've done here is created a blank uh, project and then from the launcher the library then you would add that character pack to that, um, that project. So an existing project has to be done before you start to add custom characters. So before we go look at uh, how we're going to set some of this up. Uh, I actually have two other characters in here. So I have like a Narbash and a Rampage as well. So after you add it to your project, it's going to create the folder underneath your content folder there. Uh, and then it has all the content that um, Epic used uh, as part of Paragon for this character. So we have audio, characters, and effects. So if you go under characters uh, and you go under heroes, uh, Boris, uh, there is the all of the assets for this specific character um, So we got some blueprint classes and animation blueprint particular animations that you can look through We'll get to those here in a little bit um, I'm gonna go to meshes and there is the Boris skeletal mesh. It's a pink uh, bar underneath the icon uh, We have physics assets and then the skeleton itself and some other things like the rig as well. If you double click on that skeletal mesh for this character Boris, that's going to open it up uh, in its window. Uh, this has the geometry and the materials associated with this uh, character. So it does have several materials. Uh, if you look at the tabs up here on the right, we have skeleton. The skeleton will show you all the bones. Uh, in the body, the mesh will show you the materials that are applied to it to the right of that we have any animations uh, and then if there is a blueprint already created for it uh, it'll sync us to a blueprint so there's my blueprint that I created for this character um, if we go back to animation let's roll up our asset browser and anim uh, slot manager um, we'll come back and talk about slots later but if I look at the asset browser uh, here are all the specific animations that this character has created from Epic. Um, so if we go in here and let's just go find like one of these primary ones, which is attack. Um, if I double click on that and hit play, it'll play back that attack action. Okay, there's a bunch of other ones as well, like jog forward. So if you double click on that uh, asset, the animation asset, it'll play it back in the viewport. Uh, if you go to idle, there's the idle for this character. So we're going to use, be using different assets, um, pre-created animations instead of creating their own. Um, but it's good to familiarize yourself with the way um, the skeletal system works, the mesh, the animation, and then how the blueprints can be created.
All right, so I'm going to close out some of these other ones here. Okay, so what we're going to set up to be able to use later in this RPG project is uh, a character blueprint. Uh, if you follow, follow along with some of the other videos uh, that we have put up for uh, this RPG project, we created a BP monster parent class, and then we created or can create sub child classes to that. Um, so we're going to use that later uh, and in conjunction with the animation blueprints that we'll set up today. So here's the monster uh, parent class where we have a skeletal mesh. Here is the child class class where we can then select a specific uh, character that we have set up an animation blueprint for uh, and then tell it to use an animation blueprint. So we'll come back to that later. And then here's what uh, primarily what we'll create today in a couple of the subsets is this anim blueprint. Uh, so a, a particular subset blueprint called an animation blueprint uh, where we assign it to a particular skeletal mesh and then we create uh, setups for the animation so that we can tell the character to walk, run, attack, die, do whatever else we need to do there. Um, so we have specific uh, what's called a state machine and then if I look at that state machine this is one way that we can set up motion for characters and in this state machine we have uh, a, a method that we are opening up these uh, valuables and attributes so that we can recall them to allow the character to actually be interactive in the game. So we have an idle cycle which is what is playing as default over here uh, and then from this state machine we can say we can recall turn on or playback a light attack animation, playback a heavy attack, a hit or stun attack or a death attack. Um, so that's one way we can set up motion for uh, this character go back to the um, let's see, back up here. there we go uh, back to my larger animation graph here uh, the other way is to actually use uh, animation montages so montage is a uh, more complex way to set up animations we can connect multiple animations together like I'll show you here in a minute and what we're gonna do is have our basic locomotion idle state machine and that is going to then funnel into these specific montages so that we can have more complex motions for our light attack, our heavy attack, our death, and our hit stun. And then the final one funnels into the output pose, which will then tell the system how to uh, recall the specific functions of an idle, a heavy, a death, or whatever else we're doing. So we'll come back. This is uh, what uh, we will start creating and then come back and create the specific subsets of our animation blueprint. So I'm going to close this out and then we'll come back to those in a minute. Um, so I have a higher archy uh, set up here. We have the Paragon Boris character uh, uh, folder group and then we also have a blueprints node or a folder where I have my main uh, blueprints for my project, uh, the player pawn, uh, the game mode, the HUD, and my overall monster blueprints. Uh, what I've done elsewhere is create a secondary folder for all of my character animation blueprints. It's just a good way to organize things. And underneath this folder I have a couple different things that we'll talk about in this video. Uh, the orange uh, bar underneath these first three are the animation blueprints. So I have one for each of the three characters I'm going to be using. Uh, here's the one for Boris that I just showed you. I have a Narbash and a Rampage animation blueprint. The next three are ones that you may or may not use. Uh, they're called blend spaces. So a blend space is used when we need to transition like for a playable character. Uh, I'll go ahead and open up the Boris one to show you. Um, when I want to transition from a walk uh, or a idle, excuse me, all the way to a walk or run. So this is really primarily for playable characters. It's a good easy way and quick way to set up a good blend between two different animations. So that way the animator doesn't have to do the blending. Uh, the blending is done in the game engine. So we can blend from an idle and I can drag left to right. And this is the speed of how fast the player would be pressing that keyboard action to make the character run. And then when they let go of that button, it goes back to idle. Okay. Um, so that's what's called a blend space. We won't need that for this RPG example, but in case you're doing a playable version of this character, we would set up a blend space and have that transition um, for the idle to walk. So that's what these three are. These are blend spaces. Uh, the next set, which are kind of a bluish purple bar at the bottom, 
uh, are called the animation montages. This is the second way and can be a more complex but easier to use method of uh, recalling animations. So these are montages. So if I double click on the montage, this is the heavy attack for Boris. So uh, and this kind of shows the example of I can combine two different actions. If I hit pause here, uh, this first one is primary A action or attack. And that's uh, one swing from the right side of the body. And then that's one pre-created animation. And then I've combined that with primary B, which is the left arm swinging. Uh, so montages allow us to be able to create combinations or more complex motions and also can be recalled easier uh, with less coding work than what uh, just a state machine by itself would do. So we'll come back and create this later as well. So that's called a montage. So let's just start from scratch. I'm going to come into the content folder and I'm going to right click and choose new folder. And we will repeat the name character NMBPs uh, underscore A just so that way um, I know which one's which. My regular one's going to be uh, all the ones I've already created. And then the underscore A is going to be my new ones. So the first thing I want to create is an animation blueprint uh, like this one right here, NMBP Borse. I'm going to need to give it different names. Um, you would just remove this underscore A from each one of these. Uh, and as I have it here, you just leave yours as NMBP Boris. So in my new folder that I created, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to animation and animation blueprint. So this is not under the basic blueprint class. This is animation, animation blueprint. This is where all of the commands that we're going to create today will be. So animation blueprint. <clears throat> Uh, it's going to ask me two things. What kind of parent class do I want to use? Uh, for basic animations, let's just use the anim instance. Um, we can look at our hierarchy anim bp boris um, if we wanted to, uh, but um, we're just going to leave it as anim instance. It'll create the base animation blueprint that we need. Then on the bottom section, we need to tell it what skeletal mesh we need to create um, this anim blueprint with. So we have imported in a paragon boris character. I have a couple other ones. But I'm going to make sure I select Boris Skeleton, which is the skeletal mesh that was imported in. So we'll do that. It's going to ask me to name this. So we'll do NMBP Boris. And I'm going to add, whoa, uh -oh. it renamed it for me. So let's uh, right click and choose rename NMBP underscore Boris underscore A. There we go. All right. So you can see in the preview, it went ahead and added that uh, skeletal mesh to it, the bear like character. So there's my bear character. It's not animated or anything. Uh, it's just in the T pose, the imported skeletal mesh pose. And we will come in and set up the rest of the motion within uh, our um, uh, anim blueprint. All right. So I'm also going to go back and just show you what the final one looks like again before we keep moving forward. Uh, so this is the previously created one, and I'm going to add. Um, my state machine, my locomotion, uh, to my anim graph. Um, all right, so where is my animation graph? All right, um, I'm gonna see if we can find that animation. Uh, and it's good to go ahead and look at our animations that we have. Uh, so before we start creating our um, specific actions here we need to just roll through and look at what animations we have here so uh, there's a good death one so we'll take that death one right here um, it's not a full death but it's one that we can work with um, there's even other ones like emote roar what else a roar we have an idle okay. uh, we have a jog forward in case you want the character to walk or run we have other specific ones like jog left or right or whatnot uh, we have a knockback forward as well, so it's in air, fall, knockback. Uh, this character has attacks that are called primary. Uh, so primary A, primary B, primary C. We have other ones like primary recovery, so primary D. So these are different uh, attack actions. Uh, there's a stun, so we can do stun start, and then in air looping stun as well. So the first thing we need to do is just make sure we do have the specific uh, actions that we're looking for. So we want uh, a death, a stun or hit, 
uh, an idle, and at least two or three different attacks. So we have all of those. So look through the animations and make sure we have what we're looking for here. Um, so we're going to make sure we go back to the anim blueprint. Okay, um, so uh, one thing we need to set up is, uh, where is, um, okay. um, I don't see my anim graph like I have here, so where's my anim graph? Let's go back, let's, let's uh, see if we can recreate it, I don't know if we'll need to recreate it, um, but that might help, oh, it's an animation blueprint. Uh, so let's try again because I didn't see my anim graph what we need. So let's uh, force delete let that delete Then we'll come back and try to create the blueprint again to see if uh, the anim graph will show up and We just need to turn it on visually it's Taking a while for it to delete that All right, there it goes. All right, so within this new folder, right-click, animation, animation blueprint, um, and an instance, that'll work, and Boris Skeleton. Okay, so let's make sure we don't have to turn anything on and off there. Yep. And BP underscore Boris underscore A. Looks like it created everything properly. Oh, okay, so there it goes. So I'm not really sure why the first time it didn't show you my anim graph. Um, if it doesn't show you the first time, delete it and recreate it. So here's the, the anim graph. The event graph is how we, just like with the end of the blueprint, can recall certain actions that we create, such as in the animation graph. Uh, but uh, we need the anim graph. That's how we can tell how the character should animate. Uh, so the anim graph has this output pose. And what we're going to do is create a state machine, which is basically a looping cycle that can then be recalled to determine when the character is in an idle motion, a jump, a run, a attack, a death, a hit. So that's what a state machine is for. All right, so in the animation graph, uh, one thing we're going to set up first is just a state machine with a... Um, uh, an idle. So let's right click. We're going to do state machine and we're going to choose add new state machine. Okay. All right. Um, so we can actually rename this. So if I click on that, I can say Boris locomotion because typically the locomotion is what we would call this as far as just basic motion of the character. Uh, we can go ahead and do compile and save so that we don't lose any of this. It's always good to save product in case your, your software uh, crashes or whatever. So if I do file, save all, just want to make sure I save my work in progress. Uh, we're going to close this one for right now. Close that one so we just have our uh, new one that we've created. All right, so what we can go ahead and do is take the animation pose from our state machine and drag that into the result of our out pose, output pose. There we go. Compile again, save again. Uh, but there's a warning that says uh, entry node Boris Locomotion is not connected to the state. There's no entry connection. So we got to go tell it to play some kind of animation. So with this uh, locomotion uh, state machine we're going to double click that and here's the entry so here's where we tell it to on begin play or whatnot play some kind of motion for this character we don't want it to be standing in this t-pose which is uh, unnatural so in the locomotion state machine I'm going to click and drag out from entry and choose add state and I can rename this so let's just call this idle so then from that idle uh, it's going to play an animation which is going to be called the idle. So there's no motion right now. So what I need to do is go into double click in that idle state. And then here's where I'm dragging in an idle animation. Um, so let's go over here in the asset browser and find my idle. So here's my idle. A preview should come up. If I drag this in, okay, there's my play idle. I'm not going to change anything. I do want to loop the animation. I want to play on the base um, timing. All I want to do is take the animation pose from this play idle animation and drag that into the result of the output animation pose. Okay, let's do compile 
and save. That should update our preview. So the character's now looping through an idle pose. Okay, if I go back up to, uh, here's my idle state. If I go back up to Boris Locomotion, you can see as default, it's gonna play through that cycle. Go back up to Boris Locomotion. This is my state machine. Go back to the anim graph, and you can see it's running and constantly playing this uh, idle cycle. So that's step one is setting up the idle animation. Uh, so there's two other ways now that we can add secondary actions. And one of them is to pull out other states in the state machine. And the second is using montages. Um, so montage is a little bit more complex and has a little bit more uh, detail on what we can do with the animation, um, but requires a second node. State machines require more coding to be able to communicate with that state machine according to what the player or this non-playable character is going to be doing animation-wise, uh, but is a little bit more straightforward. So I'm going to come in here and double click on the state machine again. We'll do the state machine example, come back and do montage later. All right. So from the idle, <clears throat> we want to be able to transition to other states, and a state is just a different animation. So I'm going to drag out from that idle uh, state, and I'm going to pull it up here. I'm going to do add state, and this is also where if we're doing a playable character, we would do a jump um, and uh, other actions, you know, that crouch or things like that. But in this occasion, we're just going to do light and heavy attack, a hit or stun, and then a death. So we'll start with a light attack. Okay. So when we are creating secondary states or secondary actions, we drag out from the base idle and create a new state and then rename that. Uh, this will create a transition rule. And what we need to do here is tell it what to do, how to transition from the idle into the light attack. Before I set up my transitions, I'm going to click back from the light attack and drag that back to the idle. Basically, I just want to transition that when I press a button or the character does something, it goes from idle to light attack. When light attack is finished, it goes back to idle. So this is kind of a looping transition. All right. So we have two transitions to tell it what to do as it goes from idle to light attack and then a transition from the light attack back to the idle. Here's where we need a variable. So I'm going to come over here to my variable section on the left and click plus variable. And I need to name this variable. We usually name variables as an action. So is Boris light attacking? So is he attacking in a light manner? We're going to use a boolean, so it's either be uh, yes or no. Okay, but is Boris light attacking? All right, so in each function or transition, we're going to pull in the variable. Uh, so sorry, they're not uh, functions, they're transitions. But we're going to recall a variable. So in the transition from the idle to the light attack, I'm going to double click on that. And I have a result. And what we're telling this to do is can the idle transition into the light attack? And what I'm going to do first is just drag my variable is Boris light attacking into this graph and I'm going to choose get is Boris light attacking and I do I want to say is he light attacking yes then transition into the light attack so I'm going to drag the out node into the can enter transition okay another way to do this if I delete that is to click and drag from that variable and drag it right on top of that can enter transition. And that would be the same thing. That's a get command and dragging it onto the um, input command of the can enter transition. All right, that's it here. So for, if I go back one, Boris locomotion, idle to light attack transition, it's gonna be a get is Boris light attacking. Uh, yes, then transition into the light attack. Go back out to the Boris locomotion. We want to have another transition that says, uh, is Boris light attacking? No, uh, he's finished the light attack, so I go back to idle. So this one we're going to click the bottom one, which is the transition back into idle. And I'm going to go click and drag the variable again. We'll do a get this time. Move this over some, because what we want to do is say, this light attack, is, it, Boris is not light attacking. So if I click and drag out there, and just type in not, not not boolean okay so that is just the opposite is boris light attacking not and then we're going to drag that enter can enter transition so if boris is not light attacking transition back into idle 
Okay, that's it for the rules that we need to change for the transitions. Uh, the transition from idle to light attack is Boris is light attacking, so transition. Transition from light attack back to idle is is Boris light attacking, not, or no, and that can transition back into the idle. All right, so there's my first state out of the idle. Um, so what I'm going to do next is recall the same command, but do a, a heavy attack. So um, actually, we forgot to do something, uh, which is to go into our light attack state, double click that, and we have to add an actual animation. So output animation pose, and I'm going to do uh, go down to primary. I think I did primary D before. Uh, let's look at primary C. No, we'll do primary C. A little faster. Okay. Uh, right hand action. So I'm going to drag primary C animation into my light attack state and then sync them up. Drag animation pose to result. Okay, and that's it. All right, so if we go back to the Boris locomotion state machine, it's looping in the uh, idle. Let me go over here so we can see it. And to test this out, I can go to my variables, click on is Boris light attacking. Let's do compile and save before we do this. Here we go. Click on is Boris light attacking, and in the details panel over here, there's a checkbox that says is Boris light attacking. Right now it's looping between the idle, or just in the idle. If I checkbox this, watch what happens in the preview over here, the light attack will happen. So it's going to loop now with light attack. Is Boris light attacking? Yep. So light attack is going on. If I uncheck that, it's going to go back to idle. If I check this again, light attack is going to happen until I uncheck this. Every time you checkbox something, it's going to ask you to compile again. So we can just compile again. Uh, compile and save. So, so this variable can be recalled in a character blueprint or any other blueprint to be able to say, hey, when an action happens, play this uh, Boris's character's light attack action here. So that's one way to set up some character motion. Let's go ahead and set up the other three attack uh, hit and death uh, states, and we'll come back and do a montage later. Okay, so we're going to repeat the same action, but with a heavy attack. So we're going to drag out, and we're going to say add state. Drag out from idle, add state. We're going to do heavy attack. Let's go ahead into that state and sync up a heavy attack. So we will do, uh, I don't know, we'll do D this time. That'll be a, a left hand. The light attack was a right hand, so we'll see some visual difference. So primary D and drag the uh, animation pose to the result. Okay, so that's it for the heavy attack state. If we go back to the Boris locomotion. I'm going to click and drag from the heavy attack back to the idle, so loop back. And I need to change the transition, but before I do that, I need a second variable. I can't recall the same variable here. Uh, otherwise, it'll be looping the light attack or heavy attack, and it'll be a loop issue there. So let's go to a new variable, and we'll title this one is Boris heavy attacking. Okay, it's another boolean. Okay, so in the transition from the idle to the heavy attack, we're going to drag is Boris heavy attacking to connect it to the can enter transition. There we go. That's it for that. That's a get attack or get variable uh, into the can enter transition. So uh, is the variable for is Boris heavy attacking uh, checked, then transition from idle to heavy attack. Then we're going to click on the transition from heavy attack back to idle. And then we repeat what we did earlier. We'll drag in our Boris heavy attack variable, get. We'll drag out from the output node. And then we'll type in not, not boolean, and drag that not boolean into can enter transition, which will mean uh, heavy attack is finished. Uh, transition back into idle. All right, we can compile and save, make sure we have no errors from our preview. We can click on our variables over here. So let's click on the heavy attack variable. Go to default value for the details for is Boris heavy attacking. Checkbox that. There you go. There's our left hand swing. Okay. All right, let's compile again. All right, so now we can pull in our two other states. So let's drag out from idle. And we're going to do, uh, whoops, add new state. And we'll do hit stun. Okay. Uh, it really means the same thing, but. I think in this action or this character's motions are called stun instead of hit. So double click on the hit stun and we're going to drag in stun start. Okay, I'm just going to do a basic demo. This character animation pack has a stun loop as well, but we're just going to do the stun start 
We'll drag place done start into the result. Go back to Boris Locomotion. Drag hit stun back to idle. Creates two transitions. Transition from idle to hit stun. We need to create another variable. So your variable is Boris stunned or something like that. Is he is Boris hit? I think that's what I used before. So we'll use that. Is Boris hit? So for when the player is hitting Boris, this is what will happen. We're going to drag that is Boris hit on top of the can enter transition into the idle to hit stun rule. Uh, that's it. Go back. And then we'll click on the transition from the hit stun back to idle. We'll drag is Boris hit as a git. And then we'll drag that out and do not. Drag the not into can enter transition. Let's go back to the locomotion. Let's compile and save. Let's select our is Boris hit and test it out. Is Boris hit? Yep, there you go. Playing that hit. It's going to loop right now. Okay. And then when I click off of that, it goes back to idle. So that one works. We need one more, which is a death. Drag out from idle. And we're going to do add state. We'll call this one death. Okay, we'll go into death. Um, and we will go find our death animation. Drag that in. Connect those two up. Okay, go back to our Boris locomotion. Uh, we're going to drag our death back to idle to create a second rule there. We'll click on our idle to death transition. And we need to add another variable. So we'll do is Boris dead. Boris dead. There we go. All right, let's drag from is Boris dead variable on top of the can enter transition. There we go. Uh, Boris locomotion. And we will go back. That was this transition, right? Transition from idle to death. And then the back one from death back to idle. We'll get is Boris dead again. Drag that out. We'll do a knot. Drag the knot into can enter transition. So that way, as the death finishes, we can do transition back to idle. All right, let's compile, save. Select is Boris dead and go test that out. So is Boris dead? Yep. Play death motion. Oh, he's dying. All right. So everything works. So in essence, that's a quick and easy way to set up character motion. Uh, we can also do walk and jump and uh, crouch and other things like that. Uh, or roar or what might like this character has. Uh, but that's one way to set up character motion that can then be recalled from another blueprint uh, to make this character move and animate how we want to. Good time to go ahead and save all so we don't lose anything. All right, so that works, but what if we need to have more complex motions where we're combining multiple animations together, together uh, or if we want a little bit more streamlined way of recalling these motions? We will still need this idle, um, and we'll still need the state machine of that idle, uh, but we, with montage is what we'll create in a second, we'll not need individual states like light attack, heavy, hit, stun, death. Um, we're going to recall them in a different way in like the character blueprint uh, or the game's blueprint. Um, so uh, we'll still need the state machine. All the same things that we've done so far will still work. Uh, but this is going to now be using montages. So uh, a montage is uh, a more complex setup for motion. Um, and what I'm going to do is right click in here. Same place I have my animation blueprint for the Boris character. I'm going to right click, go to animation, and we'll find animation montage about halfway down. Okay, I need to tell it what skeleton to use as default. So there's my Boris skeleton. And we will say uh, MON for montage uh, Boris. And we need to tell it what particular action we are doing. So let's do light attack. We're going to do a different and individual montage for each major action. We could also put all four of those, light attack, heavy attack, death, and hit within one montage. Uh, but sometimes it's easier to separate them into different montages. Uh, so that way, in case you need to make refinements to the light attack, it would be easier to make refinements just to that light attack. So let's double click on the uh, montage Boris light attack. All right, so we have our character uh, in the viewport. We have some... Uh, layers that we can add in here. Let me move this up just a little bit. Okay. Uh, over here on the right, we have our asset browser and then an animation slot manager. 
So the SF Browser is the same as what we talked about before. It has all the animations for this character. And the new thing is this animation slot manager. The slot manager is how we can recall this animation montage in a more efficient way uh, through blueprints. So we will use this as well. The last thing we will create uh, is a new montage section, which is like a little tick or similar to a variable that if we need to recall one specific area, whether this is a footstep for an audio noise or subset hit actions like a left swing versus a right swing, we can use a montage section to split it up and recall one part or one section of this overall animation. So we'll come back and do that as well. The first thing we need is an animation. So this will be our light attack. So we're going to go to Asset Browser. We're going to roll down to the primary ones. Um, let's do let's do primary C. This light attack will be just a one swing. So primary C, I'm going to drag that over into one of these two uh, kind of like layers. So if I drag this in here, now it has a pose. If I hit play, it'll loop that animation. So this animation is just going to be a montage of this one swing primary C action. Uh, so what I'm going to do is right click in the area above my green layer that I have here of the animation. I right click up there and choose new montage section. It's going to ask me to name this. So we'll call this, uh, let's see, Boris um, underscore light. Actually, I think it's okay with no underscores. Boris light attack and we'll say little a or big a so that way i already have one called boris light attack so we can know which one's that's which for this new version of this boris light attack a all right i don't need this default one anymore so let's uh let's pause i don't need this default one so i'm gonna come over here and right click on that default and choose delete montage section that'll move my new boris light attack a uh, section which is kind of like a tag uh, to the beginning all right um, so there's my montage setup. We're going to create our default slot, and that'll be it for the creation of the montage. In the Anim Slot Manager, uh, you can also click over here to open Anim Slot Manager. The default group default slot will work, but we're going to create individual new ones here. So open up the Anim Slot Manager, and I'm going to do Add Slot. I already have them in here, what I've created earlier, but we'll create new ones. Create a new Anim Slot. I'm going to do Boris Light attack and we'll do capital A slot. Okay, so create a new slot, which is how we're gonna, or how we can recall this in a blueprint. I'm gonna click my default slot over here and drag Boris light attack A slot, the one that we just created. Okay, that is gonna look like it is gonna reset it back to T-Pose. Let's save, okay, and I'm gonna close this out. The animation is still there if you double click this back open. That animation is still there. It just resets as a T-pose when you change a slot. So close it, open it back up. All right, so there's my animation montage for light attack. Okay, let's close that. Uh, we're gonna come in here and create three other ones. So let's do right click animation, animation montage, Boris skeleton. We'll do mon Boris heavy attack. Heavy attack. Ooh, let's see. Um, let's actually come in here and, and we didn't add our underscore a so we'll do underscore a so I know what's what let it update and we'll do right click underscore a there we go alright so we know what's what here okay so what's different with the heavy attack is we're gonna do actually two different actions we're gonna do like a right swing and a left swing so this shows that we can use a montage to combine different animations that were created at different times and save that as different FBX animation files for this character and uh, allow us to recall them both at the same time. So in the asset browser, I'm going to go down to my primary ones. Here's a primary A. I'm going to drag primary A into one of these layers. And then let's do primary D because that's the other arm swing, left arm. And I'm going to drag that in somewhere over here. Okay. So what that does is it puts them side by side. If I hit play, uh, right swing, left swing. Okay. Right swing, left swing. These are two different animation FBX files. With montage, uh, we can combine them together in order to have a more complex animation. So we can have a string attacks or things like that this way. So all that is is just dragging in an animation uh, to our layers and previewing both of them at the same time. Uh, we're gonna right click in here and choose new montage section. So we'll do, um, let's see, right swing. Let's see, heavy 
attack right swing. Okay, and I think that's the first part, right? So, yep, right swing. We're going to delete that default one. And then right here, let's move our frame. So right there where left swing starts, we're going to right click and choose new montage there as well. And we'll do heavy attack left swing. Okay. So what's nice about that is that gives us an opportunity to be able to blend these two uh, or separate them within blueprint. So I can recall heavy attack right swing or recall heavy attack left swing or recall both of them in one sequence. So that's really nice. Um, that's kind of like a variable or tag at each one of those sections. Last thing we need to do is add a new anim slot. So we'll do add slot and we'll say Boris heavy attack a slot. Okay, heavy attack a slot and then in my montage I'm gonna change the default group to default group Boris heavy attack a slot okay let's save and close that one out so that's really nice it shows that we can uh, combine different animations together in one new timeline or montage all right so we're gonna go back and create our last two so we'll go animation animation montage uh, Boris skeleton we'll do Boris Oh, let's see, mon force uh, hit stun A. There you go. Open that one up. Uh, this will be our stun. Um, so let's see, find stun. I right, can't find this. So let's do stun. There you go. Stun start. Drag that in. Um, let's let that play. So there's our stun. Okay, um, get out of that. Uh, let's create a new section. Boris stun. Let's call it hit stun because that's what we've called it elsewhere. Oh, let's see. Uh, actually, let's delete them because we're going to want to make sure we do um, you know, new montage. Boris hit stun A. Make sure we do that right. All right delete montage. Boris hit stun A. All right. Uh, anim slot, new anim, Boris, hit, stun, A, slot. There you go. And then change the default group to that new slot that we created. Save. And we need one more at the death. Uh, so right click animation, animation montage, Boris skeleton, on Boris, uh, death, A. All right, uh, so we'll go back to our asset browser and find death, drag that in. Uh, let's play that death so we can see it. Pretty good, looks like he's dying. New montage section, uh, Boris uh, death A. Okay, we'll right click and delete the default. Move the Boris death over there. Create a new anim slot. So just kind of repeating Boris death A slot. Change the default group death slot or default slot, not death slot, default slot to the death A slot. There you go. Save. All right, so now we have our four montages that we can recall within our anim graph. So back in our anim graph, uh, in order to recall these, uh, you'll more likely need to set up uh, the slots, the default slot. So uh, I'm going to let's see, move this over. I'm going to hold down Alt and click on the pose to disconnect state machine. Uh, from our state machine, I can really remove out these four because I'm going to either use the secondary state machine states or the montages. But I'm going to leave them in there just for the sake of the example. Uh, the only thing I need is just the idle. We need the state machine to still have the idle. So back in the anim graph, I'm going to drag out from state machine. And we'll type in slot. So if I type in slot, I'm going to say slot default slot. Okay. So that says, okay, well, give me the option to recall one of those animation montages, the slots in the animation montage. Montage. So if I double click or just click once on that slot, I can change that to uh, Boris Light Attack A slot. So that's the first one we did. From that, I'm going to drag out again uh, to the right of that slot, we'll do another slot. So we need to do our other three slots here. So slot, and we'll change that one to uh, heavy attack A. Drag it again, 
and then we'll type in slot, move that over, and change that to hit stun, move that file one over. We need one more, slot, default slot, change that one to death. Okay, and we'll sync that death one up to the result. So we still need the idle locomotion, uh, but to recall this, then we're gonna use our light attack montage slot, our heavy attack montage slot, hit stun montage slot, and then death montage slot. Then that goes into the uh, animographs output pose result. result. Let's compile, save, no warnings or errors. So there you go. So for a non-playable character, uh, if the character doesn't need to walk, the stationary, just the fighting battle simulation or whatnot, then that's all we need here. Um, if your character also needs to walk, we would replace the idle with an idle walk run blend space. So not necessarily required for a RPG battle sim, but uh, if your character does need to walk around, we would then replace just this idle animation uh, with a blend space. So I'll try to create the blend space. It's not necessary, but something else that I showed at the beginning of this video was how to create a blend sp or what a blend space was. So let's create a blend space here, and that'll be it for this video. So in my same folder, I'm going to right click and go to animation, and there's two blend spaces. So there's a 2D blend space and a 1D blend space. So for a blending action of idle to a walk or run, we're just gonna use the blend space 1D. So I right click, animation, blend space 1D. Okay. We need to tell a skeleton again, so we're gonna use that Boris skeleton. All right. And we'll say BS for blend space, uh, Boris, and we're gonna call this idle uh, walk. Uh, walk run, I guess, because it's really into a run. There you go. All right, so here's our blend space. Let's double click on that. All right, so in our blend space, we have a graph and the graph allows me to be able to recall if my character is gonna be in a idle, walk, or run. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is come over here to the left side where it says access settings and change the name. This is gonna be the horizontal value, which is gonna be the variable that I can recall from a blueprint uh, to determine how fast the character is walking or if the character is not walking at all. So we're going to call this one speed. So basically that's going to change the horizontal axis name to speed. This basically means from zero, character is not walking to play the idle cycle, all the way dragging it to the far right as default is 100. That would mean the character would be running. Okay, I'll show you that here in a second. All right, so we have a similar setup as our montage. Uh, if I go to asset browser, I want to find my idle. So the first thing I need to do is idle. Uh, the green uh, diamond in the middle is the drag for speed to determine if the character is walking or running or not. And then when I, in my graph here, a chart, I'm going to click idle and drag that all the way to the left side of zero. Okay, so it says it puts a gray diamond over here. So that means all the way on the left, when the character is not walking, no speed, play the idle. Okay, so as I drag further to the right, I would want it to transition to a walk and then eventually transition into a run. Okay, so the second we need is this jog. Uh, there's a lot of different jogs here, so I'm just gonna use a jog forward. And I'm gonna drag the jog over here to the right side. Okay, here we go. So I move the actual speed cursor over. So on the right is my jog, my left is my idle. If I take that preview value for speed and drag it all the way to the left, the character is going to repeat in the idle animation. If I drag that speed value towards the right, it's going to slowly transition into the jog, or what we'll call our run. If I drag it backwards, then it could be a walk, pretty good blending walk. If I keep dragging, this can go right back to a standing idle pose. Okay. So what we will do is when the player presses the button forward, if we're making the character walk or move as well, uh, then we would say as the player is moving, uh, press the W key on the uh, keyboard and mouse to move the player forward, transition from idle all the way to a walk or run. Okay. Um, so this is what a blend space can be used for. Um, the default kind of motion for the mannequin in Unreal usually is set to a speed of 375 or something around there. Uh, you have to test it out to see how fast this character runs. This is meant to be kind of a larger, bulkier character, so it might need to be slower. 
we'll just set it as 375 uh, and then change that motion later if we want this character to walk. Okay. All right. So that's a nice another way to transition between an idle into a walk. Let's save that. All right. So back in my animation blueprint, if your character is walking, I'm going to go click on that idle. And really, we're going to, we would rename this at this point, idle walk run. Okay. Yep. It allows me to put the slashes in there. So idle walk run. Uh, and then from idle walk run, we would then determine if the character is attacking, was hit, or is dead. In the idle walk run, if I double click that, if I come over here, um, let's see, let's go back and see what we named that. Bor BS Boris Idle Walk Run. So let's go find that. BS Boris Idle Walk Run. Okay. If I drag this in here, okay, uh, there's my speed variable to determine how fast my character is running. I don't need my idle anymore. So I can remove that. Um, I have my speed. I can do animation, uh, drag that into the output, and now I'm ready to recall the speed with a uh, blueprint to determine what my player character is doing. Um, it is already uh, an attribute. We would then go to promote to variable. Uh, that creates a new variable and we can call that one speed. Okay, So that way we can recall any of our other variables for attacking, hit, or death and this speed to make the character also walk. Now if you're not making your character walk, if your character just stands still, run through an idle, and then going inside of attack, hit, death, then we would not do this blend space. Uh, but if your character needs to walk, this is just something extra that you could do. Uh, we're going to compile and save. Everything should run as expected. So this video discussed how to create an animation blueprint for a character. It discussed how to create a state machine, so secondary states for that state machine uh, that look like this. So this is the state machine. Uh, we also talked about montages. So this is, let's find our heavy attack. This was a, the heavy attack montage. And then we finally talked about blend spaces. So blend spaces also allow us to blend animations in different ways. So with one or a combination of these methods, you should be able to get your characters animating uh, with interaction within Unreal.